Right, we are incredibly close to getting this MX-5 supercharged, but we're not quite there just yet because in today's episode, I need to install the blow-off valve, I need to install the inlet air temperature sensor, and I need to get the boost gauge wired up and plumbed in. Let's get to it. Okay, I'm gonna start with the blow-off valve install today. And what I've got here, I'm pretty sure, is China's finest knockoff HKS blow-off valve, which was kindly donated to me by Simon Sears. Thanks, Simon. Now, I'm not quite sure how effective this thing is gonna be, but the theory behind a blow-off valve is it's gonna allow pressure to vent out of the intake piping when you lift off the throttle. So when the throttle plate snaps shut, all that pressure has to go somewhere, and rather than have it trying to back up into the rotors of the supercharger, it'll vent out of this blow off valve instead and it's pretty simple how it works it's just vacuum operated so when the intake manifold is in vacuum the valve will open and you'll get that classic sound that people seem to like so much I'm not sure I get it but there you go so this thing came with a 90 degree aluminium pipe which was obviously no good for my setup so I cut the flange off that section and had it re-welded onto my straight section of intake pipe along with uh, the bung for the inlet air temperature sensor at the same time and this was taken care of by Ian and Clive over at Fusion Engineering in Sherburn and Elmet so thanks again to them now this blow-off valve looks quite tricky to install as it involves a circlip so to make it as easy as possible I've removed this section of pipe and taken it over to the vise. So I've got it clamped in the vise back here and got that o-ring in place so now the blow-off valve needs installing with the circlip and try as I might to film this and do it at the same time it just wasn't happening. So here it is in position with the circlip installed. You are going to need some proper circlip pliers for this because of how tight access is with the blow-off valve. So now I've got that in position I can reinstall this piece of inlet pipe and then all I need to do is run the vacuum line. And to get the vacuum reference to the blow-off valve, I've run a three millimeter line from this takeoff here on the inlet manifold. I've run it behind the throttle body and directly to the blow-off valve and then just secured it in place with some small zip ties. Great, that is one job taken care of. Let's move on to the IAT sensor. Right, IAT sensor. So I'm using this Lamarck sensor, which came with the second-hand ECU when I bought it last year. And if you're wondering why do you not use the stock inlet air temperature sensor, it's because they don't react quite as quickly as you'd want for a boosted setup. So it's pretty standard to swap them out with a more sensitive sensor if that's a thing I don't know but the downside of switching sensors is that the stock IAT plug on the MX-5's harness is most likely not gonna fit your replacement sensor which is exactly the case here so I've had to source the correct connector for the new IAT sensor which looks like this so now all that I need to do is cut the stock plug off the harness and solder this one in its place. Now as far as I'm aware, there is no polarity to these sensors, so it really doesn't matter which way round you connect the wires. So I've got mine soldered up and then I've insulated the wires with some heat shrink and some electrical tape. Okay, next I need to install the IAT sensor, so I'm just going to thread it into the M14 bung I've had welded on the side of this intake pipe, nip it up and then just plug it in. Boom. Now when it comes to running an aftermarket inlet air temperature sensor, there is another thing you need to do, especially if you're running a standalone ECU like I am, and that is update the voltage table for the new sensor in the software. So in the case of the ME221, we're in MITRE here, and this is the table I'm talking about. Now normally, you can find this information online or in the box with the sensor. I've looked everywhere and I can't find any information regarding this particular sensor. So. I messaged Alex Hickson about this, who will be tuning the car in the future, and he basically said don't worry about it, he should be able to work it out. So in my case, I'm just going to leave this table on the base configuration for now. Right, we've got the IAT sensor installed and the blow-off valve installed, so let's move on to the final job of today, which is installing this TIM boost gauge. Now, this isn't by any means the fanciest boost gauge you can buy, but it gets decent reviews and it should be fit for purpose. And I've opted for the plus one bar gauge because we shouldn't be seeing anything higher than that with the supercharger. So, in order to get this thing installed, there's a few things I need to do. Firstly, I need to get a vacuum line from the intake manifold of the engine to the gauge, which if you 
saw last episode, you kind of know I've already done, because in that episode when I was running the vacuum line for the mini bypass valve, I teed into it right by the bulkhead here, and then ran a line into the cabin through my favourite grommet. I run everything through this grommet. So, that was pushed through there into the passenger compartment, and I've basically fed it up the back of the dash, ready for when I fit the gauge. So, moving on to the gauge, if you followed this series for a while, you'll know where it's going. In the MX-5 parts panel, I bought and installed way back in episode 5 of this series. So I'm going to mount it alongside the AEM AFR gauge I've already got in the car. And as it's a 52mm gauge, it'll slot straight in there and then can be secured in place with the bracket provided. Right, so the last thing that needs doing with regards to this boost gauge is wiring up the backlight. Now, I'm glad I did a bit of reading up on this before hacking into some wires because it's slightly more complicated than I thought and that's all because of how the dimmer switch works in the MX-5. Now, I always want my aftermarket gauges to be dimmable by the factory switch, if possible. And when I've done it before in the Capri, for example, it's always been a case of finding a positive wire to the dash lights, splicing into that and then grounding the bulb anywhere job done. Not so in the Mazda because the dimming is actually controlled on the ground side of the circuit which means not only do you need to find a 12 volt dash illumination wire you also need to find the ground as well which when I wrapped my head around it actually wasn't too difficult because all I did was find the nearest dash light which ended up being for the hazard light button right above the gauge panel. I unplugged it and isolated the two wires for the bulb which were the red wire with a black stripe and the grey wire with a red stripe and once I'd done that I simply spliced into those two wires and connected up the bulb for the boost gauge and I must have done it right because it worked. If I'd have done what I did in the Capri and just splice straight into the positive wire and not use the correct ground this can cause all kinds of problems apparently so that's just a word of warning if you are wiring up backlights on aftermarket gauges in an MX-5 be careful and make sure you find the correct ground. Right, so that's a few more jobs taken care of, but before I go, let me do a quick budget update because it has taken a small hit in this episode. So, the blow-off valve, the Chinese fake HKS blow-off valve, that was free. Thank you, Simon. The plug for the replacement inlet air temperature sensor, that was free. Thank you, Simon. The inlet air temperature sensor itself was £7, but I already included that in the budget way back when I bought the ECU. So that just leaves us with the boost gauge, which actually I got a little bit of a bargain on because it was on auction on eBay. It was brand new, still in the box. I paid £11. So that was pretty good. So with that purchase, my current spend is now at £1,845. Right, what's next? Well, throw a belt on the thing and fire it up. Now I have measured for a belt and ordered a 1250 belt. So when that shows up, providing it's fine, I'll be installing it and then we'll be attempting our first supercharged startup. So if you want to stay up to date with this build, subscribe to the channel. And if you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. Thanks, I will see you in the next episode.